Uh, my name is Hal Stern. I'm the Dean of uh, Donald Brent School of Information and Computer Sciences. And so I wanted to formally welcome you this morning to our, our program, uh, Women Empowering Women. Um, we're very excited to have you here. I'm not going to say too much now because I hope and trust you're all coming downstairs and you'll hear me at 10 o'clock <laughs> with a longer song and dance about what's so wonderful about UCI. Um, but I, I did want to say uh, especially, I, I think anyone, everyone knows that the issue of kind of women in computer science and technology fields is a huge issue for our society. And I wanted to say just a teeny bit, and then Deborah and Sharnia will say, uh, say a bit more. A teeny bit more. A teeny <laughs> bit more. Because <laughs> mainly, mainly we want you to hear from students and, and uh, about what the experience is like here. Um, but at UCI, um, and I'll, let me do the kind of two introductions, but uh, Deborah Richardson is the founding dean of our school and a recently retired faculty member in informatics who's uh, back on my request, uh, kind of helping out in a couple of areas. And Sharnia Artis is uh, a little bit more than a year, right? Um, uh, or the director or the assistant dean for access and inclusion in our school, ICS, and engineering next door. Um, and so uh, we, we're putting a lot of effort into kind of thinking about ways that we can make our environment um, really welcoming uh, for all of our students. And just a, a small number of numbers, I'm a statistician by training, so <laughs> numbers, are, numbers are what I do. Um, you know, nationally about 18% of bachelor's degrees go to women in computer science. Um, and so we're, we're ahead of that. We're not where we want to be, but we're currently about 25% of our student population is female, um, but the entering cohorts, the freshman classes are increasing. Last year, I think it was 29% or so. Um, and one of the ways we do that is we have a wide range of majors so that there's something for everyone. Um, and we also have, I think, a great environment, and you'll see that when you talk to, meet our students and the like. Um, a team, and um, as well, I think most people know this, but I would like to, you know, Irvine itself is a very wonderful, wonderful environment to be in. That is. Um, you know, so there's there are all the attractions of Southern California, but it's also um, the safest city of its size in the United States. Um, it's close to the ocean. Uh, there's kind of parkland galore, I was just mentioning. Um, my wife and I love to hike. There's unbelievable hiking all nearby. Um, so it's, it's a great, great environment, and we hope that you'll take the opportunity during the day today to get to know a little bit about us, um, the various professors and staff that you'll meet, um, the students that you'll meet. Um, in the program, uh, and be sure to ask um, as many questions as you have, uh, anything you can think of. That is, we want you to learn what you need to know to make a good decision. Um, I should have started by congratulating all of you on being admitted. That's a significant achievement. I'm the father of two college children right now, so I know what that process is like, and uh, having uh, great choices, and we think UC Irvine is a great choice. Um, it's the it, only choice. <laughs> <laughs> I do the soft sell and then I'm a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having great choices, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing for, for, for all of you. So you should be proud um, as parents, as children, for what you've achieved. Um, and um, I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Deborah and Charnia. Uh, I'll be around for a little while and then I'll meet you again uh, downstairs. Okay, so my name is Deborah, as Hal mentioned. Um, and I am a professor emeritus in the Department of Informatics. Um, but most of what I do is really trying to encourage more women to come into the field of computer science, um, information and computer sciences. So both here at UC Irvine as well as kind of, I do a lot of work nationally in this area. Um, later this afternoon, we're hosting an Aspirations in Computing award ceremony for high school girls who have had aspirations and accomplishments in computer science in, com in the computing fields. Um, so I don't think any of the women here are in that, but you should have been. <laughs> um, anyway, um, and we are a, a, a large player in an organization called the National Center for Women and in Information Technology, whose goal is to really change the face of computing, um, to, to make it more um, e equally, rep make women more equally represented in that field, in the field. <coughs> so. Uh, we do a lot of work with them. We do, they have a lot of evidence-based um, research, evidence-based uh, activities and um, practices that we try and do, we try and employ here at UC Irvine to make this a more inclusive, a more welcoming environment for women in computer science. 
So we actually do a lot of surveys of our students to see what's working and what's not working. Um, and then we try and change things. A while back, we completely changed our introductory computer science program so that not really, not, not specifically so that it would be more welcoming to women. Actually, we've done this twice. <laughs> um, but would be more welcoming to all students and in particular to women as well. So we have, for instance, all the, the introductory courses are use what's called pair programming. So you actually work with someone else on your programs and that's something that we, has been shown to be um, uh, more, something that women appreciate because it, it, there's a, this element of collaboration. And, but it's, it's good for all students because you learn by teaching someone else. So that's what pair programming is kind of based on. And we've done a lot of other things with our programs to make them, um, to, to really target them to be more inclusive and more welcoming for everybody. So I really do think this is a great place um, to, to be. Um, I actually, I've been here for 28 years now at UC Irvine for 28 years. Um, and it's been a, a fun ride. <laughs> so, and as Hal said, you know, I, I kind of am, I'm, I did retire recently, uh, but not really. <laughs> and uh, most of what I do when I came, up, most of what I do now is to work on these issues of women in computer science and trying to um, see what works and what doesn't. And, we have a great women in information and computer science organization. You're going to hear from them later in, in the next few minutes. <laughs> um, and they do, they have meetings every week. It's amazing. You know, every week I get a notice about what they're doing this week. And uh, so they have a lot of things going on that's, that really help to bring the new students in. Um, so anything else? An anybody have any questions or anything? Yeah. I'm not a student. I know, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Students don't so wear what hats. Are, what, are, what are the uh, common uh, challenges for female students in computer science in general? Um, I, well, you know what? I would, I would rather let the students answer that, one of the female students answer that, because I, it's been a long time since I've been a student in computer science. Um, but I would say that one of the challenges is, has been in the past, that there were so few of them. You know, so, I mean, a while ago, we were at 11% female students. So when you walked into a class, I remember one time, actually, when I really got energized about this issue was in the mid-90s, and I walked into a classroom that I was teaching, and there were about 125 people in the classroom, and I counted about five women. And I said, this has to change. This is crazy. This is not a field for men. I mean, one of the problems with that is if, if only, and I have nothing against men, <laughs> but if only men are designing the next computing systems, they won't be things that women can actually, they, they won't necessarily be things that are, that are comfortable for women to use, okay? So we need to have all perspectives, not only, not, not only men and women, but also all different um, cultural backgrounds and everything else coming into the field to, to make the next technology, to create the next technology, so that it is something that all people can use. So, I mean, the, the, the perfect example, and it's not really a computing example, but I, I love to use it, is where do you put your purse in a car? <laughs> Cars are designed by men. There's nowhere for a purse. <laughs> The same thing happens in computing technology, you know? So that's one of the reasons that we really try and, and work towards getting a more, a more equitable balance of, of male and female perspectives coming into the creati creating the next technology. But I will let the students talk about what the challenges are for women rather than me, because I just see it from a different perspective. But when, when we talk to alumni, you know, that, that's often what they report. What made it <coughs> challenging was looking around the room and you know, there's yep. only a few other women. And now that we're at 25%, and, and in fact, the, the incoming freshman class is more like 30%, it's not, it, it's a little different, you know? It's, it's, it's much better. <laughs> so, and, and it's not that way nationally. So the national averages are still much lower than, than we are here. So it is a great place to be because of that. So 
Thank you, Deborah. Um, I'm going to be short because you have questions. I want to invite the panel up, but as Assistant Dean of the Office of Access and Inclusion, um, our office is responsible for making sure that everyone is engaged, is ex having an exciting time at UCI, and they're thriving. And so we work very closely with WICS, the Women in Information and Computer Sciences organization, but we also have mentoring programs for our students. So you can be paired with a peer mentor through WICS, or you can be paired with a industry representative. Some of them are alumni, um, and some of them are outside of UCI, but working in industry so you can ask questions. I think we have, on the panel, we'll have some students who have been in our mentoring program. Uh, we also offer different workshops so that you can learn about test taking, study skills, time management, things that you need to be successful here at UCI. Um, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, you have questions about undergraduate research, we have different programs to make sure you connect with graduate students um, to, to help you figure out if there are research pro projects for you or figure out what your interest is. Um, a lot of times we have faculty as well as students at those events so that you can network. It's really all about creating a sense of community here in ICS. And so my office just really helps facilitate that. So this event today is, is an example of bringing the community together. And so with that, I'm going to just introduce the panelists, or actually I'm gonna ask them to come up. And um, you can ask questions. We have people from all different backgrounds. Um, I'm going to call on Michelle first because she's on my list. Um, Michelle is a computer science and engineering first year student. She also, I thought she would be really good for the panel because not only she's a first year student, but she went to the Grace Hopper celebration um, in computing. How many of you heard of Grace Hopper or that, that <laughs> have not been there in that part of weeks, the, the admitted students? So Grace Hopper um, celebration of computing is a annual conference uh, where women in computing and technology from all over the world come together to talk about computing, talk about technology. There's industry, there's um, faculty, there's students, and lots of workshops, lots of speakers. I think last, last year, um, Cheryl Sandberg from Lean In was uh, one of the, the speakers, but you have amazing people that's there. But every year we take a large group of students, and this year we had 40 students attend. We had <coughs> our freshmen, incoming freshmen come, and so we're going to do that again this year, and we'll invite you I, I to participate. Add, I just going to add, I went, I went, I've been once, and it, it, you have to understand the scale of this. This is, <laughs> this is about, last year I think it was like 8,000. 8,000. 8, last year there was 12,000, 12, this 000. year there's going to be 15,000. And, it, and it's a, it is at least 90, I think it's more like 95%. Oh, it's 99% female. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> so I went as a man once and you sit in this auditorium and it's exactly the compliment of what we were just talking about. You look around and you, you know, you can maybe find a few other men. So it's a really interesting experience. Yeah, I was going to see, I had put, I put a picture up here to show you the group. I'll make sure I, sh I share it with everyone. So Michelle was one of our first year students that went. And so we typically, you all receive lots of emails from different universities. So if you decide to come here, you'll get an invitation to apply for um, attendance at Grace Hopper. And we offer last year registration, hotel, and um, travel was covered by a grant that we received from BRAID, which I don't know what the acronym stands for, but the funding comes from Google, um, Hewlett Packard, Intel, and another um, technology company. So Microsoft. Microsoft. If it's, it's Microsoft. I don't think Hewlett Packard. Okay. Microsoft and Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Microsoft, Facebook. Google, and Facebook. So that's where the funding comes from. But we get those type of opportunities, and so you're here all about that. So next up, Katie. She's right here. So Katie's a fourth year in computer science, and she's also our new. Wix co-president. I'm going to invite Janae up as well because she's the other co-president, software engineering um, student, third year. So welcome, Janae. We also have Rachel. Rachel's in informatics. Your fourth year? I'm computer science. Oh, computer, yeah. science? computer science. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how. I, I was in informatics. 
fourth year. Practices. So you, oh, you were. She so was. she was in informatics and switched to computer science. So if you have questions <laughs> about that, she would be excellent for that. And she was also in the mentoring program mm -hmm. and did a study abroad yep. recently. And so, I did research. And did research. So you can ask her questions about that. Um, Jacqueline Wellum. I'm not sure if she's here yet. I don't see her. But she was also another one that went to um, Grace Hopper. And then we have Samantha, who goes by Sam. Um, she's in informatics, and she's a third year, and she's part of Wix. And then we also invited, um, we have a video game development club here. And so we invited Derek from that to come. In case any of you are interested in gaming, you can ask some questions about that. And we're going to do a, a tour um, downstairs where you can see some demos of the gaming. All right, so we have this panel here. It's really informal. It really is all about you. They can, um, you can start with questions if you have any. Anyone have any questions for our current students? What's it like being a woman in computer science? <laughs> <laughs> before, you, before you answer that question, I forgot to do this. So we're live streaming, oh. and so we have three viewers <laughs> online. Hi. Um, so I wanted to welcome them to participate in our Women Empowering Women um, Breakfast. So we also have some viewers online. Now you can answer that question. Thanks, Deborah, for getting started. <laughs> and you can go in whatever order and don't feel like everyone has to answer. So I guess I'll start. <laughs> Being a woman in computer science, um, it's fun. I, I like to say that there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of support. Um, Wix is fantastic for that. I got to go to Grace Hopper as a sophomore, and getting to see such a large group of women in computer, computer science really <laughs> helped validate me that I was in the right place and that I was doing the right thing. And um, the other, just there's so many opportunities as a woman in computer science here that there's just no way to go wrong. Um, you can do research, you can do the mentorship program, you can do study abroad, you can do everything. Like there's just so many opportunities. Um, really fun. Anybody else? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I love about UCI is how big, like, how many programs we have within the school. So like, we cover like almost all of the aspects and that's one of the things I love because it's like, like, yeah, I can do programming, but it's not like my favorite thing and it's not like what I'm like the best at. And like, that's what informatics is, is like we do more of like the design, like you see like web development and like the design of web pages and like we talk about, you know, what colors are the best to use or what fonts and like I love like being able to like go into the details of that. And so having, you know, something that's like there for me is really cool because it's not, I, I'm not just stuck into computer science where it's like, well, oh, you're forced to code all the time, and you're forced to do this. It's not that at all. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but like, it's not even that for computer science majors. Come on. <laughs> but there, it's literally there's something for everyone. I mean, we have informatics majors. You have computer science. You have, you know, CGS, which is computer game science. You have business information management. You have software engineering. There's so much that like you can really find your place in the world, and that's what I love about it. We've gotten rid of most of the dark rooms where people kind of whip you while you <laughs> <laughs> We've made a lot of progress. Okay, I'll go next. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like being a woman in computer science, especially at UCI, has been like pretty great. Because I don't know but I don't know what I was expecting, but when I came, I was like, oh, there's a lot of women, like more than I expected. Like I thought I was gonna be like, oh, there's like four other women. But then a lot of my classes have had like a pretty good amount and like enough for me to like have made some really good like female friends in my like CS major, and I've just found it really welcoming. And, I, and then we've also have a lot of like female professors. I think Deborah likes to mention that informatics has like 50% women or something, right? Like the informatics department has like 50% like female professors. Yeah. And so like you know like there is like like you are being taught you can like you have the opportunity to be taught also by like women as well, and not just not just all your professors are like men. Yeah, so to add on to Janae, um, this question is kind of hard for me to answer what it's like to be a woman in computer science because I never felt like I was just a woman um, in computer science here at UCI uh, because there are a lot of women actually in my classes and I've been able to be friends with a lot. And so when I went to study abroad in 
um, Scotland in Edinburgh. Um, one of the things that struck out to me was being in a discussion sort of place of 10 people. And that was the first time I felt like a woman because I was the only <laughs> one in that discussion. <laughs> And the discussion leader, um, the sort of like the grad student there, would not look at me in the eye. So he would, he would be uh, discussing a problem, but he would only focus on the guys and asking them uh, to answer the questions. And so that was probably the only time I really felt like I didn't belong. Um, but here, coming back, I really appreciated that UCI has created this amazing community for women here in computer science. I had the same experience studying abroad. I was also in Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my same gosh. Same experience, and like they have a comp uh, competing society there, and I went to that competing society, and it was all guys. Yeah. And there was like those two girls, <laughs> yeah. and they were like shocked that there was like a female. They didn't know what to do, and they were like quizzing me on CS stuff to see if I was actually a computer science major. <laughs> it was so funny. But yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm first year. It's it's been pretty well, it's been pretty good. Um. I haven't really felt like as excluded uh, to be a woman in my classes. Um, I think though the ICS school is, they have more women in their classes, but being a CSE major, I'm finally taking some EECS courses and I finally like was in a class this quarter where like I- Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess like, so I sit in the front and um, after the first class ended, I turned around and um, I finally like noticed like most of it was guys. I couldn't. I could find like three girls, and I didn't even know who they were. And um, I think that point was like, whoa! It kind of shocked me, like the difference between guys and girls. But the good thing about it is, like, most of all my professors have had like they've taken time apart of, from their lectures and were like advocating for more women. Like they they supported like my physics professor, my ICS, my math. Like they all see the problem and they're aware of it and they want, they encourage more women and they're really welcoming. Other questions? Um, what kind of internship opportunities are there for like, the computer science majors? Um, so Do you want to repeat the question? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the question was, what type of internship opportunities are there for um, computer science majors? Internships? I will have one in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I've been told, you there's a very diverse type of or diverse bunch of internships. So if you're more designed, like you're in informatics and you want to design more things, you could be sort of like a product manager. Um, you're managing uh, the design and what goes into the product. Or you can go for a purely computer science internship. And so you're building a product. You're building a feature of the product. Um, and so my internship this summer is going to be based on sort of like building a system for people to uh, rent cars based on, for this company. And so when they arrive at airports, they have a car available for them. And it's cheap, and they can check out what car they want. Yeah. What's the name of the company? Expedia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had two internships. Um, I worked at DirecTV after my sophomore year. Um, and that was more of a coding internship, I, did, I was making a web app for um, the automation team um, so that the upper management could see how the automation was going. Um, it was a really interesting experience. Um, I had a good time. It's not exactly the company for me. It ended up not being my favorite. Um, did have a few issues with some guys there and just, yeah, not, not the best of things. Um, <laughs> But my second internship was at um, a smaller company called Cario here in Irvine, um, and they were amazing, and I had a fabulous time there. And um, I worked on mobile apps there and made, um, helped add features to their iOS app specifically, um, working in both Swift and Objective-C, objective switching back and forth, and it was so much fun and an amazing time. And then um, I have a job I'm going up to uh, up in Workday in NorCal when I got to. <laughs> I have, this summer I will be interning at Amazon doing software development. With, it, with respect to CGS in particular, we all, most of your internships will be gaining experience with game development companies. The 
I guess, holy grail of internships would be a internship at Blizzard, which conveniently at Irvine is 10 minutes away. <laughs> Usually, Blizzard internships do most of the tasks variable. There are internships for artists, film design, but the majority of ICS related ones are in like user interface programming, so building not the gameplay itself, but the menus and menus that go into that. There's also gameplay programming, which is crowded game itself, server programming, engine programming, and there's also design internships, which is how do we make this part fun? What, what, is, what about this isn't fun? What do we need to get rid of? What do we need to add? So whatever you're interested in, <laughs> there, yeah. there's something there for you. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's tons of opportunities. Um, I mean, you go to a career fair and there's tons of companies like hiring and stuff. It's just you have to get the nerve to like talk to them, <coughs> which can be like scary. But like, I know for me, like after I went to the first one, it was like, okay, I'll do better at the next one. You know, it's like a, it's a learning experience. It really is. Um, I wouldn't call it an internship necessarily, but last summer Janae and I actually worked with um, Girls Inc of Orange County, and we got to do this really cool program where we uh, taught high school girls from like low income areas how to program a robot to dance. <laughs> and you can it's do it like again really this summer too. <laughs> Maybe we're all figuring out this summer. <laughs> but uh, it was really cool, it was really fun and like being it like for me like um, I had done camp counseling before and so that was kind of like an easy like here I'll go into more of a technical side of it but it's still kinda like the same thing for me. It was really cool to like show high school girls like what kind of opportunities there are out there while also like making it fun because like seeing them like after they made like the first program of having like the robot just talk back to them they were all like oh my god they just like Kevin talked to me <laughs> <laughs> so that was really cool and there there's like tons of opportunities everywhere in terms of the corporate piece the only thing I would add is that you know they gave a, a great description of the opportunities but there's a career center, so the career yeah, fairs. Yeah. Um, there's a mentoring program. In terms of how you find these, there's a yeah. mentoring program. And I know one of Rachel's came through the mentoring program. Um, and then also the companies actually come here, this, in fact, very room often to do a showcase. So uh, Google has kind of comes here, I think, at least once a quarter um, and uh, some of the others. So most of the tech companies have very strong ties with some of Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and the like. So, uh, so they're kind of corporate partners of <coughs> ICS and engineering, um, so a lot of opportunities. And we, we try to facilitate that. One of my most frustrating experiences as dean is, uh, I'll meet people like now in May, April, May, June, and I'll meet a company who says we really want an intern, we can't find anyone, and then I'll meet a student who says I really want an internship and I can't find one. And I'm like, you guys need to get together. <laughs> <laughs> and so make, we, we we're working very hard on trying to improve the way we make those matches. But there are a lot of different opportunities. Um, I want to add for the mentorship program. Um, it's a fantastic program. I did it for the first two years. Um, they've worked out a lot of their kinks now, and it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It was really helped me. Um, I learned a lot about, I come from two parents that are both engineers. So I learned about a lot of different types of engineering. Like I kind of grew up with the thought that engineering was only in the defense industry, which is not at all true. Um, so the mentorship program really showed me that, because there was a woman um, who was my mentor she was computer science, but she was um, in the pharmaceutical industry, something I never thought about before. And so, yeah, it's, there's been some, I really recommend the mentorship program. It was fantastic. <laughs> also with Wix, we host a lot of like information sessions with companies. And so a lot of times like at the beginning of the year, companies will be like, can we host an event with you? Because we're starting to look for like full employment as well as like internships. So they'll be like, here, we'll host an event with you. And then that gives like a lot of us the chance to like talk with them and like really like like you know, you get to know the people as well as be like, hey, can I give you my resume? Like <laughs> if there's any opportunities. <laughs> so that's really good too. Yeah, I, I wanna add a lot of companies too do want to host an event too with us like Wix mm -hmm, yeah. because they are looking to bring more women into their workplace as well. So like sometimes it's like a really good opportunity. Like, we just hosted an event with Facebook a week or two ago, and already the guy, like, c emailed us back again being like, when can I set up another, like, to host another event in fall with you? And we're like, we're not planning for that yet. <laughs> but we'll get back to you, you know? So there's lots of opportunities. Anything else? 
Any other so how, how soon can you start the inter internship? First year or second year? First year, if you can get one. It's a little harder first year because um, we want you to have a bit more experience. I did research my first summer, which really helped give me something to show for my next, for my internship that I had after my sophomore year. Um, but if you can get one your first year, go for it. But I really recommend in, um, research because it shows that you can b make something, you can do something, and it shows experience because that's what companies are looking for. There's a lot of programs for sophomores too, surprisingly. So that's usually the year most people like start <coughs> getting stuff. And then junior year, it seems to be more competitive. <laughs> yeah, junior year, it's kind of like, feels yeah. mandatory. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of companies like to hire third year. So like once in your junior year, they're like, we're hiring third years. <coughs> But a lot of the bigger companies do have programs for freshmen and sophomores. Mm -hmm. Like I think Microsoft, Google, and Facebook, Facebook okay. have, have like they have programs. yeah they have explorers programs where they're like more like just seeing you can kind of go and see what kinds of stuff you want to do, and they're geared towards like you know so they they don't basically don't expect you to have as much experience as like they would by like your third year or something. They'll teach you. The yeah, they'll teach yeah. you. That. <laughs> yeah. One thing I want to add to that our office, um, especially for first year students, we try to give them tangible experiences that they can put on their resume so that they can be competitive for those internships as a first year student. And so we have an OAI Scholars Network and every summer student we invite students to participate in our summer transition program. And so I, Michelle was one of our participants this year so I was going to see if you could share more about your experience with <coughs> OAI Scholars Network and then uh, the summer program in particular. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I don't have an internship this summer, but um, yeah, I went last the summer going into my first year. Um, I was in the OAI Scholars, and it was like a two-week program. Um, basically, we um, coded in Python and coded to a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, I came in knowing um, some computer science because I took it in high school, but um, one thing I wasn't exposed to was the hardware. So I, I had like a lot of, so I got exposed to like wiring a breadboard and stuff like that. And being a CSME, CSE major after the two weeks, like it kind of got me excited for the engineering aspect of my major that I wasn't really, uh, like I didn't really know what to expect. So that's what it helped me. And um, also doing the program, like it gave me something on my resume. Um, then I went to Grace Hopper and um, I went to the career fair and I talked to um, like I wasn't afraid to talk to companies and obviously like what they said it's really hard like they most of the time they're not looking at freshmen sometimes sophomore and more third year but um, they're still open to talk to you and tell you what you need to do to prepare for when you're third year and stuff like that. Did you say you're doing an internship this summer? I'm not. Oh you're not? Okay. Would you like to give more information on that scholar program? Some of them, why yes? Yeah, I, I definitely can. Um, so, OA, the summer transition program is typically, this year it's transitioning to three weeks. So, some, from the feedback from the students, they felt like they needed more time with their projects. And so, it'll be held in August, the first three weeks of August, um, in addition to a design project. The, the, Students are paired in teams, one engineer and one computer scientist, so the computer, computing student can focus on the coding and then the engineering student can focus on hardware, but they can also exchange knowledge and really help each other out. We also have different workshops from the services on campus. So uh, Dean Stern had mentioned our career center. So we have someone from the career center that will come in and talk about resumes. Uh, we have our um, LARC, our Learning Academic Resource Center on campus where students can sign up for having a peer tutor for their class. So we have someone come in for LARC, but they also talk about how to prepare the tr for the transition from high school to college um, because it's a lot different. Oftentimes they say, you know, how you study in high school is gonna be totally different on how you prepare for your college mm -hmm. classes. So we try to give students an early exposure to that uh, we also do some team building activities. We have a lot of faculty come in and do uh, presentations on different topics in computing and technology, but also talk about their experience in working with students. Um, as Michelle said, 
you know, it can be intimidating going to in, come going up to talk to people in the industry. Sometimes students think it's intimidating to go talk to faculty. So we try to break down those walls before they even get here so they know, you know, if they need to go to office hours, go to office hours. You know, your faculty are there to help you. Um, but it's a pretty intense program, but it's also a fun program. Through the academic year, the students get support. Um, we meet, is it twice quarterly? About twice, twice every, about three. once a month. So um, two times per quarter we have, we call them family meetings that just continue for the summer uh, where they all get together, check in. Uh, if they need resources, we try to connect them to those resources. And so students are invited to apply right after they SIR um, or submit their intention to um, register for UCI. They'll get an invitation to apply. They probably have already seen, received emails from me because I sent out newsletters about some of the programs that we have. So what are the chances to get in? What are the chances? How, how do you select them? How do we select them? That's a good question. So last year we had about, I would say maybe about 70 applicant, applicants and we had 20, 20 participants. We're anticipating about 20 again. They apply, the application requires an essay. And so really their, their essay um, determines a lot why they want to participate. We're looking to give students experiences that will prepare them for UCI. So if they don't have any computing experience but they're in ICS, you know, this is an opportunity for them to get some hands-on experience. Uh, we're also looking for students who want to be part of a community. So if they're looking to be part of a community, they would be a good fit. So their, um, their essay should say that they came to this breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Absolutely. They, their essay could say that. <laughs> and we'll be like, oh, well, it was one of these students. They want to be part of a community. Yeah, they want to be part of a community. Because that's what it's really about. UCI has many different communities. It doesn't matter which community you're part of. We just want you to be part of a community. And we want to make sure that you're successful. So OAI Styles work with another community. So good question. Um, I want to thank the panel because we have some folks from our region. We see this. Thank you so much. Um, Jordan, yes. you're gonna he's gonna talk a little bit about BGDC. He has a presentation, so we'll pull that up. And um, after that, you'll do a, a tour downstairs. But if you have questions uh, no, no. for some of our current students, they'll be around. We can ask those questions. Um, doing the ICS scholars there, you're going to get a lot more information about the different uh, majors in our school. So that's, that's to come as well. Yeah, so uh, I'm Jordan. I'm from the Video Game Development Club, as you can see, uh, BGDC. And I'm here with uh, Derek is also a member of the BGDC, and then Josh is also a, me a member as well. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about sort of what it is we do. So what are we? Right now we're a club of about 100 plus active, you know, very active members, not including alumni. Uh, and we're a club that's dedicated to creating video games, uh, not really playing them, right? There are, there are clubs on campus such as uh, TAG, the uh, like Association of Gamers, and like Fighting Gamers at UCI, which are dedicated to like playing. And we're, we're not really that. That doesn't mean we don't know how to have fun, but that does mean that we are primarily uh, lear learning oriented and product oriented with a focus in creating and nurturing uh, project teams that are student, you know, they're, uh, they're groups of students. So um, general meetings, uh, they're about once a week, or usually pretty consistently once a week. It's, a, it's an opportunity when we get together to catch up on club news, you know, what's everyone up to, what's going on. It's a, we can ask questions to the officers. I am an officer, I'm a writing officer right now, and next year I will be the community manager or whatever, the administrative position. Uh, Josh is also an officer, I think, right? Design, right? Okay, just making sure. And then I know uh, Derek is also an officer as well. And so it's, uh, as well as, you know, you, if you have any questions, you show up there. It's an also an opportunity to like make new friends, to network, get to know the people who will probably be like your coworkers maybe, and definitely your peers, people in the same classes as you, uh, other like-minded individuals that you can find to help recruit into your projects. And in addition to just you know general club meetings, sometimes they include guest speakers who come from the industry or people like alumni come back to talk, uh, demo sessions, play testing sessions, if you want some um, 
criticism or some feedback on any games you're developing. And uh, towards the end of the quarter, we have um, project presentations, which is when people have a pretty finalized, uh, polished product. They can show it to the rest of the club for you know like a like a, like a cool like rock session, you know, like a, like uh, one of those. Um, music festivals. <laughs> so uh, since, like I said, we are project, uh, the main goal is to like establish and nurture projects. What these are, are they are student organized and student run essentially like game projects where you develop a functioning game that hopefully you can put on your resume and you can show um, potential employers. So they are, they matter, they're important and they're good to do because they give you hands-on experience and actually, you know, getting your hands dirty and programming and putting your nose to the keyboard and typing all those lines of code and everything. And they go beyond just the in-class knowledge that you have, right? Because if you're applying for a job with a bunch of other students and you've all taken the same classes, what is it that sets you apart from everyone else? It's what you can, it's what you have made. And it, in addition to that, since you're working with others, it displays an aptitude that, hey, I can work with other people. I can work well in teams. I can work well with people who maybe I don't like or I don't get along with. I can, you know, I can, I can get past off that and we can work together to create something. And you, you, build, you build practical knowledge and practical like real world skills, right? Where you encounter bugs that you have to get over. You have scheduling conflicts. You might have conflicts of interest within your, your own, uh, your own um, project teams and you get over and you don't get over them but you you find a way to work around that and to really show that hey I'm prepared for this in the real world and perhaps most importantly it gives you a real tangible product that you can put on a resume that you can put on a portfolio that can that you can show potential employers to say look I didn't just take any classes and I didn't just take these classes I made something and I put my time and I put effort into it and I created something that you can play like right now you can download it and you can play it and this is a sprite from one of the games uh, last year, which I think we have a demo actually downstairs. So this is a, just a cute little sprite that is, uh, you know, uh, our student created art so and everything. So we have a uh, artist, you know, you get student artists. So the way our club sort of supports these projects is that we will help you pitch your project. We will help you find the other members you need for your project, artists, programmers, writers, designers, audio engineers, everything, all that you need to really create a good looking project, pro product. And we'll help you if maybe, maybe you don't, or maybe uh, you want to get involved but you don't really have an idea that you feel like you really want to show, you, we will put you on a product, uh, you can listen to everyone else's pitches and you can uh, ask to be like placed on that project or we can find you a project that needs you. Maybe you have a certain skill set and there's a project that needs like a programmer or there's a project that needs an artist. We'll help you pair you up with those projects so that it's a you know, mutual benefit. You can develop your own skills and then they get um, something in return as well. And a system that we implemented this year is an officer buddy system, which is uh, for the projects we have a, an officer usually that, is, that sort of acts like a liaison and a line of communication within the club and the project that provides you with like maybe you, maybe um, you're looking for new members but you don't really know how to how to advertise that so we, you can ask your officer buddy hey hey how can I um, get these new members in my club that we need and uh, these are individuals with experience you know the the more uh, experienced members of the club the administrative officers usually who can who have been through this before and who can help you and who can tell you what it was what um, what they did and what their experience is like and then we can you know we provide good experience that you can that you can use. So another way that we support our the members of our club is through workshops. So officer-led workshops that help you develop uh, your own toolbox of skills. You know the things that you need in the industry. Maybe maybe you're an artist, but you're looking into maybe you want to program some more. You can go to these programming um, workshops, or maybe you're a programmer. You want to learn more about writing, and so you can polish your own skills and you can broaden your skills. And you can find people within those workshops that are interested in the same things that you are interested. You find uh, writers there, or maybe you find a programmer who's really into the same mechanic that you want to sort of develop. And you can pair up together. You can invite them to your group project, and now you have a new friend, and you make a new member, and you have a new a new coworker as well. So some of these include um, some of these workshops that we've hold, we, that we've held are like introduction to Unity. Unity being the game engine that we primarily use. Uh, programming, uh, design workshops, art workshops, writing workshops, audio workshops, and then towards the when you. Towards like your later years in the club, like um, 
like resume workshops and portfolio workshops that prepare you for sort of um, your foray into the outside world, so to speak. So what else do we have inside of the club that is just, that is not really um, project oriented? A really big thing is uh, game jams, which are, we hold them um, like uh, winter and spring quarter, and they are essentially, we group a bunch of students together and you build a working game over a single weekend. Like it's, you we, we don't, we suggest against like pulling all nighters, but it is like you, you get together and you really, you hunker down and you really, you start to code and you do that and you commit yourself to a weekend to creating a tangible product. And a big draw of this is that it's, it's an entire year long project shortened to one weekend that if you want to, you can polish it up. I know that um, one of our, one of the game jam games from last year or um, earlier this year, earlier this year was uh, the members, they, they were like, wow, this is a really cool idea. We, well, we want to work on this beyond the game, uh, beyond the game jam. So they, they, their team kept together and they're working on it right now and it's uh, Guestimate with Connor, the names of the, that's the name of the game. And it's a really, it's a really nice professional looking product that they, that started with this game jam. And these game jams, there you're working under realistic conditions, right? You know, in the real world, you will have deadlines. You will have to pull all nighters. This is sort of an introduction into what it feels like when you're uh, you're, you're under pressure and you know you're you're thrown into the frying pan. And this is what it's like. And you need to get something done. And it's not as much commitment as a year-long project. Maybe you just don't. Have, maybe you're really interested in game development, but you just don't have the time, right? You have your classes. You have to, you have your extracurriculars. So it's you can still find a way to get involved that doesn't mean committing yourself to a year-long project that is, that is, you know, we have these uh, once, uh, we have these twice a year, or twice a school year pretty much. So outside of that as well, we have uh, GDW, which is Game Developers Week. We have professionals from the industry who come to speak about, you know, their own experiences, insight into the industry, um, information on what translates into career, what they took from their um, like college experience and applied to their um, real world job applications. And we have, we've had some pretty big names, you know, in the past. Uh, this, we, we had, uh, we hold this winter quarter, I think, I'm not sure. But we have um, past speakers include, you know, uh, people from Blizzard, Chris Metzen, Jeff Kaplan, Tim Ford, um, you know, writers and, uh, you know, head designers for things like Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, uh, you know, these big name AAA <coughs> games. We've also had speakers like Brianna Wu, who is from Giant Space Cat, which is a, a game company. Uh, we have uh, Nolan Bushnell, who's from a co-founder of Atari. Uh, and then Thomas Jetsch, who's from Riot Games. And he, I, I really like, you know, his, uh, he's, he's a really cool, pre I went to um, his presentation last year, and he was like this really energetic, a really cool guy who really gives you a lot of insight into what it is like to work and to fail in the industry and how to pick yourself up from that and keep on going. So he's usually like a pretty, he's a pretty cool guy to go listen to. So what else do we have? Uh, like we're gonna, we're gonna show you guys later, but we have a, like a dedicated game space, uh, DBH, Donald Bryn Hall, 1412 downstairs. It's in the lobby. It's the room with the big windows and the big, um, you can see all the, the big computers there and the big monitors. And it's a place that's open to members of the club, and it's a place where you can meet others, where you can talk to officers, where you can check out what other people are working on, you know, their game projects, maybe they're just artists there who like it. It's usually where we hold workshops, and it's an open workspace. Maybe you just want to get some work done, you just want to get some homework done. We've started, this year we had daily, um, daily lab hours where it's just open, there's always an office there, you're always welcome to come. It's a place where, you know, maybe you just need to study, you, um, you want to be in a, like a productive environment, maybe you go back home or you go back to your dorm and it, you know, there's distractions, there's like TV and whatever, there's internet, there's social media, and you just want to be someplace where there's a work environment. And as you can see, there's a lot of people working there and that's not, that's not usually what it looks like. Usually it's not as cluttered and uh, not as many people <laughs> there, but uh, you get a sense of what it's like. This is a, this is a working environment. So, the, uh, you know, getting involved, if the stuff like this does interest you, we have a newsletter, we have a Facebook group, we have a, we have a website, you know, um, usually if you type uh, VGDC UCI into Google, you'll find something, you'll find our website, you'll find the Facebook group, you know, if you type it into Facebook, you'll, um, you'll be there, it's a group, you know, ask to be invited, we'll probably, we'll, 
there's no reason we wouldn't admit you. We always want more people. And, it, uh, you know, if you want to get involved, you know, the, the Anteater Involvement Fair during week zero, that's where I found VGDC. I had always known there was a big, like, game development scene in SoCal, but I'm from, nor uh, from North Cal or Central Cal. So, like, I came down, I was like, okay, this is, this is the big hub of where all the game development um, companies are. And I didn't, I, I didn't know there was a club about it until I actually I, I stumbled upon them in the Anteater Involvement Fair. So it's a really good place to find other clubs, to find, to find us. We'll be there. We'll have a booth. Um, you know, week one, we have our general club overview, our general club introduction. And then week two, we have the, the, product, the project pitches of all the people who are interested in developing, you know, their own project for the rest of the year. You'll come there. You'll see what people have to say. You know, if you're interested, you'll join. And that's... Generally, what it is. Thank you. Finish. Yeah. Thank you, Jordan. All right. So next, we have a tour or yeah. demos down in the video game lab. Um, this will be. This is really the conclusion of our Women Empowering Women breakfast. So you can go down for the demos. The parents. I strongly encourage you to go to the I ICS Scholars Day, which is in 1100. If we could have a couple weeks. Um, members show you where that room is. I encourage you to go there to get a seat <laughs> for you <laughs> and, and one for our admitted, yeah, <coughs> and for the admitted students because sometimes we, even though people are RSVP, we have people come from the community. So I want to make sure that you all don't miss a seat because you're up here. So the parents, if you could go to 1100 um, and the students, you can go down to 1142. Is it 1142? Uh, 1412. 1412. Yeah, and, and, and they'll take yeah. you down there. And Who Josh, was your name? Josh. <laughs> Josh and Jordan. They'll take you down there. But thank you so much for coming. If you have any questions, you can always contact us. We're here to help.